Welcome, welcome everybody. It's Big 12 Big Football presented by Dr. Pepper on your TV or your phone or your computer or your tablet, wherever you're watching. Thanks for joining us. Hey, how about ESPN College Game Day up in Ames? Yes, it's finally Ames Day. Iowa State against Iowa. We'll dive into that matchup, of course, here in a little bit. TCU travels up to Purdue this Saturday. We're going to talk about Jalen Rager a little bit and what he wants to do this season. Kenneth Murray and that Oklahoma defense will take the road and take on UCLA, a team that's struggling right now. Murray really wants to take control and bring back that Oklahoma defense. And finally, Big 12, Pac-12 after dark. Texas Tech will travel to Tucson to take Arizona. We're going to take a little bit of a look at Alan Bowman as well. But first, let's get into that full schedule. K-State makes their return trip to Starkville this morning. West Virginia welcomes NC State to Morgantown as the Mountaineers try to get things rolling, especially that ground game. Oklahoma State will travel to Tulsa, then Iowa State, Iowa, TCU, Purdue, OU, and UCLA. Texas will head down to Houston to battle Rice and the Red Raiders out in Arizona. But we start in Ames and the Iowa Corn Cyhawks series. The two schools have played every year since 1977, and I'm going to go on record and say that this might be the biggest crowd in ESPN College Game Day history. Fans have been waiting for this moment for a really, really long time. Even last Saturday down in Austin, you could spot this giant Ames Day banner, sorry for the blurry picture, amongst the sea of signs and fans. Iowa State hasn't beaten Iowa since 2014, meaning Matt Campbell hasn't secured a win over the Hawkeyes. And this is a pretty big early test for ISU, one that Campbell is ready to pass. I think uh, another step for us that, you know, at least under our regime and since we've begun to build this program, it's just something we haven't done. And, you know, I think every year we've been able to start to knock off some of those things that we haven't done. And obviously that's another great challenge for us because you talk about a program uh, that obviously great competitiveness, great ownership, and a team that wins very similar to how we do in the detail and in the margins. And so I think it's a great challenge early for our football program. And uh, obviously a lot of respect for who they are and how they do things, but also a great understanding of how important that football game is as we continue to push our program forward. Iowa State comes in off an early bye week, the week before just getting by you and I in that triple overtime win. In that game, the Cyclones defense didn't give up a touchdown in regulation and held the Panthers to 229 yards before OT. A big part of that front seven, Jaquan Bailey, big number three, needs just one more sack to become Iowa State's all-time career sack leader. He's got 18 and a half sacks right now that currently has him sixth among active FBS players and makes him an intriguing guy to watch as the season goes along as that draft stock continues to climb. He's just his unique play, you know. He's, he's very powerful, he's very strong, he's very fast. He's very good with his hands. Um, I would compare him to like a, a Von Miller type, and he's just, and he's just getting better. So it's, it's freaky. The Cyclones are going to need that unique play on Saturday. The Iowa Hawkeyes haven't committed a turnover in this game since 2015. Bailey in that defense certainly want to change that. Kick at 3 p.m. on FS1. College game day gets going on ESPN at 8 a.m. Central Time. TCU hits the road to take on Purdue on Saturday night, and there's no denying one of the biggest impact players on the offensive side of the ball for the Frogs is wideout Jalen Rager. The junior is already one of the top receivers in TCU history. He's third in TD catches in just over two seasons of play and trails Josh Doxson by nine touchdowns for the all-time TCU record. That's not bad company to be in. Rager has caught a touchdown in eight of his last nine games, including a 37-yard score against UAPB to start the season a couple weeks ago. In Purdue's win last week, the Boilermakers defense surrendered 420 passing yards, and though they may have been selling out to stop the run against Vanderbilt, TCU brings in weapons both in the backfield and at wide receiver. We're paying too much attention to Rager or anybody else will burn you. I mean, I'm not really worried about that because, you know, once once people start paying too much attention to me, then that opens the team, that opens it up for my teammates. And I have we have a lot of playmakers, so I mean, they're not, they won't be able to double me for too long because we have a lot of we have a lot of playmakers, a lot of people that can run. Well, even out of high school, you know, he's a six eight high jumper, so he can elevate, and he and he's, you know, he ran on a four by one hundred, then ran a forty point something. I mean, he can he can roll. You know, we just we need to keep him healthy. I think the biggest thing is getting him Saturdays. Those TCU playmakers will be on full display Saturday night, 6.30 p.m. Central Time on the Big Ten Network. The Oklahoma Sooners currently hold the nation's longest true road game winning streak with 20 straight wins. 
That run will be on the line Saturday at the Rose Bowl as OU makes the return trip against UCLA. The Sooners won handily last season in Norman. The Bruins off to an 0-2 start this year. Oklahoma's put up ridiculous numbers on offense in its first two games. Obviously, Jalen Hurts getting a ton of attention right now. But I want to take a look at that Oklahoma defense for just a second. The Sooners have been notably down on the defensive side in recent years, but OU brought in former Ohio State coordinator Alex Grinch to revamp the Sooner defense. We won't really be able to note tangible change on that side of the ball until OU gets a few games under their belt, but one guy that continues to make his impact felt is senior linebacker Kenneth Murray. K-9 through two games is in the top six in total tackles, tackles per game, and tackles for loss in the Big 12, and he's only getting better. The senior had to step it up this year and be a leader on that defensive side of the ball. He was named a captain before the season began. He's excited about the new scheme under Coach Grinch and is ready to show everybody what this Sooner defense can do. Well, I think that's really the biggest thing with, with having a new coach. Um, just you know, really seeing, you know, the mentality that he wants to instill to the defense and then really, you know, taking that and running with it and being a leader and really, you know, taking that and trying to get all my other guys to buy into that. I think that's really where the biggest change comes in is, you know, just the mentality that Coach Grinch is enforcing with us and just getting everybody on the same page. And a little Big 12, Pac-12 after dark to end your night. Texas Tech takes on Arizona at 9.30 p.m. Central on ESPN. Both of these teams are in the top 10 in total offense in the entire NCAA, so definitely expect fireworks in this one. Arizona gave up 41 points to FCS opponent Northern Arizona last week and nearly 375 passing yards. So you know Tech quarterback Alan Bowman and that high-powered offense are licking their chops. Bowman is eighth in the nation and leads the Big 12 in passing yards per game for two games. Coach Wells knows he's got a young, talented, and coachable quarterback to lead this team now and in the years to come. I'm excited to coach him the next three years. He's smart. Um, he can see the field. Um, he can anticipate. And, uh, you know, I think those are qualities that are hard to coach. Seven of the Big 12's nine games this weekend are against Power 5 opponents. That's the most among peer conferences. The league also has the toughest strength of schedule among all conferences based on opponents winning percentage. Now, let's check out the top plays from last week, courtesy of our friends over at Stadium. Check it out. Morrison three. possession for Baylor. Charlie Brewer hands it off to Ebner. Changes direction, makes a man miss. Looking for the outside. He's got there. Look at Ebner go. Oh my goodness. Ebner still on his feet inside the 20 and out of bounds. Are the key to Sam Ellinger on first and second down. Jason turns the corner, can't get there, and Eagles catches it and keeps his feet. Brandon Eagles into the end zone. Touchdown, Texas. The football and he underestimated where that football was thrown. It got over top of him, an easy catch for Eagles, walks into the end zone for the Horns. You know, the first thing you gotta eliminate when you start building the program. Braylon Arnold makes the first man miss, has room to run on the right side. He's got a chance for six. Braylon Arnold! That's it. That's all I've got this week on Big 12 Big Football. Enjoy all of the games, and we'll see you next weekend.